All right, in this video, we are going to take a look at how to create a discussion and some of the elements of that discussion. So first thing as always, once you're in your course, you come over to edit mode and turn that on. You slide down to wherever in the course you want to add that discussion. Select add an activity or resource. And under all, you will look for forum. Once there, you give it a title, right? Uh, amazing discussions, because all of them are. And under description, here's where you would want to put the prompt, the, the guidance, the understanding of what they need to do. So talk about fun, cute animals. That is a discussion everybody should have. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend displaying the description on the course page for this because especially if you have a lot of details, that's going to make your, your course page a bit longer. Now we're looking at forum type. Uh, standard, for, standard forum is your typical discussion where everybody can create posts and everybody can respond to posts. Uh, but there's a couple other options here. And if you want to uh, learn a little bit more about them, you click on the little question mark and it talks you through the different ones. I will say an interesting one, uh, an interesting option is the Q&A forum where students must post their perspectives before viewing other students' posts. I really like this. Um, often for certain questions, for certain conversations, it's really useful that students have to provide their initial thoughts and before they start to view others. So it's a really just kind of what do you think before you start sharing. And it's not some, some sometimes to view that as like, oh, you know, we don't want to like we don't want them to cheat. I think what I really like about it is it's we don't want students overwhelmed. If you go into a discussion that you're already uncomfortable, or you don't feel like you have a lot of knowledge about, and somebody else is in the course and they post, you know, five, six paragraph short, you know, uh, a, a short manifesto, as it were, it's going to really diminish that student's comfort with sharing their thoughts. So it's a really good opportunity for students to just, you know, share before they get influenced or engaged with others. Uh, but there's a couple other options you can play around with availability. Uh, so you have two dates here, the due date and the cutoff date. I tend to recommend skipping the cutoff date and using a due date because that will at least alert them to when something is due within the course, you know, in their calendar and um, other parts of the course. So I'd always encourage enabling that. And I would typically identify the day that you want them to post their initial post by. Um, so if you have them posting, if their initial post is due before their replies are due, then you want to privilege the, the initial post day. Um, but that's, you know, the, a lot of that is, is up to different people's preferences. Um, attachments, so if you want to allow for any attachments, you can, uh, and you can set the file size for that. Depending on what you're doing, it may or may not be useful. Uh, word count may only be useful if you're if you find that's something relevant, um, and not so much about like. There's always questions about quality and quantity. I think that's less uh, less useful than say you might be using word count because maybe it is you know they're actually putting together pitches that may need to be elsewhere and that there are word counts. So. I, again, I would be hesitant about how well or how substantial you, you lean on that. Under subscriptions, uh, optional subscription means people can opt in to actually getting email notifications about the conversations. Uh, I, again, for discussions, I would leave it at that and allow people to, to choose other than rather than forced auto subscribe or disable it. Uh, some folks will really want to be tuned in like yourself and others won't be. Read tracking is very similar. Um, you can kind of a set, um, allow for the students to check what posts they've read and not read. I'm going to skip the discussion locking and blocking. Um, I don't find those entirely useful. The whole forum grading, if you are going to have this a graded discussion, then you'll want to change it from type to scale or point. If it's points, uh, what is the maximum amount of points? And then the grading method, do you want to do direct or do you want to create a marking guide or rubric? Um, there's not a whole lot of different, there's some differences between these two, but ultimately they're both there um, as a means of, rather than just a simple, this is your grade, giving students more information about how to make sense of that. 
Uh, within your gradebook, if you have different categories, then this is where you would select that category. So uh, you may have discussions as part of your uh, discussions may be one, one part or one category of grading. You know, participation might be another or final paper, etc. Uh, grade to pass, I'd skip that. Um, it's not really useful in this sense. Um, and then default for, for notifying students, this is that once uh, you have graded them, um, they will be they will be notified. Uh, again, for discussions, I probably wouldn't use this as much, but uh, some folks may, depending on how robustly you're using the discussions, that may be useful. The rest of these I usually skip out, except again on activity completion. Here, you might want to think about, do you want, you know, no indi uh, does not indicate activity completion, students mark manually or show activity complete when conditions are met. This is the one I typically do. Uh, the things that they are needed is uh, that I ch typically choose is they are required to view. Um, and then required posts. This, this one is specifically posts and replies. And so if there's a total number you want them to reach, maybe it's three, um, then you select that. You may you may think about it differently and decide, no, I want them to create at least one post and reply to two. Um, again, that is up to you on, on what makes what makes more sense for you. Uh, and then finally, complete, uh, expected to be completed on. So this isn't that different from the due date up here. Um, the one thing you might think about is playing around with the due date is when everything is due. So both discussions and posts and then the expected completed on might be, uh, sorry, I had that reversed. The, you could have um, the, the due date be when their initial post is due and then the expected completed on when they have met the criteria of both, you know, uh, creating one discussion and two replies. So it's a little more in depth than some of the other uh, items that within Moodle, but I think it's, it's worth the extra time. So hopefully this is useful and thank you very much.